video we're going to be doing a Pythagorean theorem math problem. So let's get into our problem statement. So here's our question. So in the diagram, PQRSD is a pentagon with PQ is equal to 8 and QR is equal to 2 and RS is equal to 13 and ST is equal to 13 and PT is equal to 8. Also, the angle PPQ is equal to PQR which is all equal to 90 degrees. So what is the area of the pentagon PQRST? So once again, let me, I'm just going to draw out whatever the question just said just to give a better understanding. So what it said here is that PQRST is a pentagon with PQ. So this line here is equal to 8. Uh, this line here, so QR is equal to 2. RS is equal to 13. So all the way from here, this is equal to 13. And then also it's saying that this here, so PPQ and PQR, those are both equal to 90 degrees. And now we're just looking out for what the area of this pentagon is equal to. So let's see our possible answers for this question here. So our possible answers here, we, we have 76, we have 84, we have 92, we have 100, and finally we have 108. So just before we get into the solution for this problem, try solving this problem by yourself. And if you have any struggles and questions, then you can see our solution. So we're going to get into the solution right now. So let's get into our solution. So our question is still up there, our possible answer right here, and this is our diagram. So what we're going to do, instead of finding the area of a pentagon, we're going to divide it into different shapes that we're already familiar with. So it's going to be easier for us to find the area. So what we're going to do is, what we did was that we uh, just joined on this line from R. We just made a straight line here and we created our own uh, variable X. So here we got a rectangle. So we can easily find out the rectangle for this. And then what we did after that was that we just went from R and then we combined it, this line here into a T. So then we got a triangle here. And then we also got a big isosceles triangle over here. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to look for the area of all these and then we're just going to add them all together at the end to get our solution. So let's just get in with our solution. So we dropped a perpendicular from R to X on PT. So what we did was that we dropped a perpendicular from R to X on the line of P and T. And what happens then as we and then we also drop a perpendicular from S on Y on RT. So we drop one over here too. So after this, what we're going to do is we're just going to find out the area of the rectangle first because it's very simple. We already have our values given there. So we can see that the, uh, the area of the rectangle is just length times width. So our length is equal to 8. Our width is equal to 2. So the area of the rectangle is equal to 16. And from there, since PQRX is a rectangle, then XR is equal to PQ is equal to 8. And PX is equal to QR, which is also equal to 2. So we're just... Uh, explaining more for how we got the area there. So now from then, what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of this triangle here, which is PXR or RXT. So thus, the area of the triangle RXT is equal to one half times base times height. And what is our base? We know our base is equal to XT. And what is our height, which is XR? So our base is going to be equal to 6 because we know that here this value from P to X is, it was equal to 2 and then this value here is going to be equal to 8 so we just subtract 8 minus 2 so we got 6 for this uh, length here. So then we have uh, 1 half times 6 as our base and for our height we already have 8 here given so we know that it's just 8. So 1 half times 6 times 8 we get our, the area for our triangle is equal to 24. So for our rectangle, we got 16. For our triangle, we got 24. And now we've got to find out for the bigger triangle here. And by here, what we're going to do is we're also going to find out for the length of this one here. So it's going to be easy for us to find out the area of this isosceles triangle. So first, let's find out the length of this. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem here to find out that length. So by the Pythagorean theorem, TR is going to be equal to, so TR will be equal to the square root of xt squared, so xt squared plus xr squared, which is equal to the square root of 36 plus the square root of 64, which then when simplified, we get our answer as 10. So we know that this length here from t to r, we get that value as 10. 
So since triangle TSR is isosceles with ST is equal to SR and SY is perpendicular to TR, then Y is the midpoint of uh, TR as well. So from that information, we know that TY will be equal to YR, which is also equal to 1 half, which means that TY is equal to uh, YR, which is equal to 5. Since this is in the middle and we know that this was equal to 10, we just divide that by 2 and then we get our answer uh, for this TY or YR is equal to 5. So with that information, we're just going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what the, uh, what the side length for this one is, so the middle length for ys, we're going to find out what the length of that is equal to. So, so we're just going to look at this side here for example, so we're going to forget about this half, we're going to look at this half of the triangle. So for this half of the triangle, we know that this is equal to 5, this is equal to 13. So let's just use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what the length of ys is equal to. And since we know that the uh, hypotenuse is equal to 13, so we're going to uh, do it that way. So by the Pythagorean theorem, SY will be equal to the square root of ST squared, so ST squared subtracted by TY squared. And that will basically be the square root of 169 subtracted by 25, which is equal to 12. So we know that uh, the length of YS is equal to 12. So now from there, therefore, the area of the triangle STR will be equal to 1 half times tr times sy which is equal to one half times what is tr we got that is 10 10 times 12 so one half times 10 times 12 and we get our answer as 60 so that means the total area of the isosceles triangle is equal to 60 so that means all we have to do since we know that the area of all of these we already found those out all we have to do is just add them together so 60 for here plus 24 for this triangle here plus 16 for this rectangle here is equal to 100, which means we got our answer for the solution as D100. So thank you so much for watching from Try To Be Useful, and we'll see you guys in our next math problem.